Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and uh, I wanted to re-review this film. I had reviewed this film in the past on my account, but uh, Sony, as it says there's SonyPictures.com, well, right where my finger is, they had no stripes, but they had flat, not flat, but they had put a copyright notice on that for footage, so I took it down, decided to do another review for this film with no footage. But it got me to see the film again, and it's a really entertaining film called Blind Fury. Bare Bones DVD, of course, because it's a good movie, and most good movies have bare bones DVDs, at least in my eyes. But Blind Fury with Rudger Hauer, one of my favorite films starring Rudger Hauer. Really enough, one of the producers is Tim Matheson, the guy who starred in Revenge of the Nerds. Which I guess he was a fan of those Zatoichi, those sort of... Uh, Samurai films and such where you know you have a blind man a little boy uh, Probably like the lone wolf and cub where you have the guy and a little bit it's Directed by Philip noise If that name kind of sounds familiar he directed that Angela and Jolie film salt He also directed Patriot games clear and present danger um, I think he actually directed dead calm way back when this is my favorite film of Phil Noises. I do, without a doubt, think it's his best film that he's directed, Blind Fury. And it's written by this guy named Charles Robert Carner. And this guy, this guy didn't go on to do much. He did TV stuff, and he went on to do the screenplay for the Larry the Cable Guy film, Witless Protection. He went from Blind Fury... To Larry the Cable Guy's Witless Protection. Makes me want to pick my nose right into my brain. That's sad. Larry the Cable Guy, I mean, I can kind of, I can watch his stand-up. Maybe. But not movies. Just does not work for movies. But Blind Fury. Basically, a Rudger Howard's Nick Parker. He was in Vietnam with his friend uh, Terry O'Quinn. Here, Terrence O'Quinn. They're about ready to go home, and there's a big old firefight. Rudger Howard goes in to intercept. Terry O'Quinn leaves his ass, and the character Nick Parker does a mortar shell, hits nearby him, and blinds him. In the beginning, you just see him in the jungle, all blinded out and shit. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know where to go. And he's found by this local group of people who teach him, you know, to listen and ultimately to use a sword. So at first, you know, the throwing stuff is bouncing off his head and the little kids are laughing. But then he's able to use the sword like a pro. And now he... The film has a great sense of humor to it. Um... You still, you really buy the fact that Rudger Hauer's character is blind. Rudger Hauer plays the, the blind factor very well. You get little bits of humor from that, like he's going down, not hitchhiking, but he's walking on the side of the road and he comes across something. Oh, he's like, good doggy. And it's actually a fucking alligator. Or a crocodile, I can never tell the difference. But it's actually, <laughs> so he just walks you know, over it or by it. And basically wants to see Terry O'Quinn. But long story short, he's gone to Terry O'Quinn's uh, ex-wife and kid. His ex-wife is actually Meg Foster from Leviathan, They Live, Master of the Universe, among many others. And she has a, they have a son called, played by actor, I think Brandon Call is his name. And... It seems that Tara Quinn has run into some sort of mobsters in Vegas, and they know he's sort of a, he knows his way about chemistry, so they want to develop this drug. And bad guys led by Randall Tess Cobb have gone there by the time Rudger Howard goes there um, to sort of grab the kid and make Tara Quinn make the drugs more and more efficiently. And they actually shoot Maid Foster. And you see his, uh, Nick Parker's badassness when he handles that fucking sword. Cuts one guy's ar you know, arm off, or I should say hand off. He's fucking with this guy. Cuts here, cuts there. 
and the after effects of the shelf falling down, um, fucking Randall Tetz Cobb, who ultimately he does escape. Kid's been knocked out, and he doesn't have the heart to tell him that his mom has died. So basically, they don't meet up with Tara Quinn, and you see their journey and them sort of making fun of each other. Like the the kid does sort of rebels against uh, Rugger Hauer. Like gives him this rock. Oh, I've got a piece of candy. And he's doing it, he's chewing it, and ultimately just spits it back out right into the kid's forehead. <laughs> Poop. Uh, ultimately, he does tell the kid, and you get another badass action scene in their cornfield where he uses his senses, uses his hearing, and but he pokes out, shoot, pokes right back in, and a guy shoots in one of his own fellas. Uh, he gets to where Randall Tescob is there on a, sort of like a, a shed. Cuts a piece of wood and he slides down. Thinks he's killed Randall Tesco, but he actually had uh, like a, a vest on, bulletproof vest on, protective vest, I should say. And him and the kid bond, Roger Howard and the kid bond. And Brandon Call, I guess most people remember him. He was uh, one of the kids on Step by Step TV show. That was probably his big claim to fame. Um. I guess he was on a year of uh, Baywatch as well. Uh, hasn't done much. Pretty much the last thing it says he did was the TV show Step by Step. But this film was released in, God, what was it, 1989? And it's really sad because when this film came out, it only made $2.6 million. Which is pretty damn pathetic. Pretty much any film you put it out there, it's gonna make more than two point six million bucks, and this is total, for what I understand, total two point six million dollars. That is pathetic. That there's no other nice way to put it. That's just pathetic. That is pathetic. Two point six million dollars total. It did not deserve that fate. That's why it's bare bones. That's why this film's never going to get a good DVD. That's why, unfortunately, you don't you know have a lot of people talk about this film. It's sad because it's very entertaining. Um, you have the ending where the kid's been taken, but he's got Terry O'Quinn. Like first off, he goes to get Terry O'Quinn. You have these, you have these two sort of uh, good old boys, as I call them. And you have the scene where they deal with some other like. He's trying to figure out how to get in, Roger Hauer, and he places some bets. He's in a casino. And he's doing well, and another guy comes in, and unbeknownst to most people except Roger Hauer, he cheats. He switches the little balls that do the. And Roger Hauer is able to hear the beeping. And he's able to cover the sword fluidly, the little piece of electronic shit that's in his pocket. Turns the thing upside down and bit old riot. Oh, they're cheating! He's able to sneak through and these guys are not able to get to Roger Howard, but they go on ele another elevator. They have that line where one guy goes, shit. One girl goes, fuck. Shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. <laughs> because Roger Howard fucked up the elevator and now they're stuck in there. But once he gets terror Quinn, they leave and finds out that the kid has been taken again. Well, I shouldn't say again, but they found it succeed in kidnapping the kid. Roger Hauer and Tara Quinn have to meet him sort of on a snow side, sort of like on top of a mountain in a way. It's kind of a building. I guess maybe where they're on this like gigantic, not like ski slope, but uh, kind of a trainy car. And they will both sneak in. You have a great scene where you think Terry Quinn ran out on Rudger Howard again, but he's actually dousing off the lights, so Rudger Howard hits everybody's ass because all the lights are gone. And they're like, we can't, I can't see anything. And Rudger Howard goes, that's where I live. And fucks him up really well done choreography. Rudger Howard really did his work, wielding that sword like a pro. You have a final, uh, he has a final fight with Sho Kasugi who's hired in there as assassin because there's a line where your main bad guy uh, Noble Willingham who was main bad guy in uh, Last Boy Scout 
It's like, give me Bruce Lee. Well, he's dead. Well, give me his brother. <laughs> so they got to show to Zudi. And yeah, I did have a little bit of humor because Roger Howard sort of touches his face and is like, ah, oh, Japanese, huh? <laughs> Good back and forth. And great comeuppance. He fucks up Shoto Zudi around the sort of, uh, sort of hot tub type things. They have to electrocute Shoto Zudi. And Noble Willingham shoots, not nah, Randall Tescow actually shoots Roger Howard in the arm. He able to grab a sword and just fling it, stab him on the Randall Test Cobb. He gets another sword, comes up, just brutal swipe, just a great comeuppance, blasts Randall Test Cobb out the window, and when he falls, you see that he's cut into two pieces, which they took that scene and stole it and used it in Star Wars Episode 1 Phantom Menace when Obi Wan killed fucking Darth Maul. <laughs> it looks almost the fucking same. You watch that scene in Blind Fury. And then you watch Phantom Menace, you're like, George, did you steal? Are you fucking thief now? You watch it. Only Roger Howard does it better. He takes a bit old swipe. Phew. Guy goes out, and as he falls, he splits into two pieces. Just like Darth Maul, only they did it first here in 1989, and in my opinion, it looks better and more badass. Roger Howard can beat the shit out of Ewan McGregor. With a stare, let alone anything else. But uh, that's my opinion. I like Blind Fury a fuckload more than any Star Wars movie, to be honest. I like the original Star Wars, but I hate the prequels. I have them on DVD because the extra features are more entertaining. But if I had to be honest, I like Blind Fury more than any of them, but that's just me. I don't hate Star Wars movies, I just I like this more. You really uh, get to. Enjoy. I don't know why they put this guy on the back, cause or on the front. You don't really see a guy looking like this in the entire film, so that was stupid. But Roger Howard, this is one of his best acting. He does have a good sense of humor to the character. The character is not a mean son of a bitch. He's the total opposite, and he has fun with his role. Like there's a scene where he has to drive, and one guy's like, "What's your problem? Are you blind?" I love Roger Howard's, uh, yeah, what's your excuse? And Dad goes, holy shit, <laughs> and backs off. So Roger Howard's having a lot of fun. Good pace, great pace, I should say. The film, it says 84, 85 minutes. Really, without the end credits, this would be 80 minutes. Not even 81, I would say probably 80 Maybe 81 minutes. So it's not that long at all. Very good pace. Um, you know, supporting cast, you get character actors like Terry O'Quinn, like Randall Tetzkob, like Noble Willingham. The kid, Brendan Carl, isn't too bad. He has a little, once in a while, a little off moment here and there in the acting, but, you know, he's okay. Wasn't too annoying. Roger Howard really pulls it off. When the atrocities happen, they happen. Roger Howard did a great job training with the, the sword. Uh, he played the, a blind man very well, I thought. And also the film has a sense of humor, but it's never parody at the same time. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, not only the sense of humor, but... Oh, I like the fact it is rated R. I don't know if you can see it on this camera. I, to, if you made this film today... It would not be rated R. It would probably be put, boom, the PG-13. But I like that, because it's not like Blood and Gore. It's not. Like uh, Revenge of the Ninja, or, you know, that stuff. Or Ninja Assassin that just came out. You're not, don't go in it. You're not going to see a lot of Blood and Gore. I mean, you see, like, an arm cut off, and you see him split it as he's going, you know, cut in half, in a far away shot. Um, but it's not like Blood Spur and, like, Kill Bill and stuff. No, no. But, you know, you, you know, people get cut, and they get killed, they get stabbed. Again, you don't see, like, extra close-ups of blood gushing, you don't. But, at the same time, it is rated R. So, I do appreciate that. And, you know, great pace, it's fast-moving. Roger Howard does a solid job as the lead. Solid choreographed action fight sequences with the sword. And, just an entertaining film. Nice sense of humor to it at times. We Roger Howard's performance, and it ends with an enjoyable experience that deserved more 
than $2.6 million at the box office. That's a fucking pathetic joke. Vampire Sub made that more in its opening. Even if you take into account fucking... Even if you take into account how prices have raised, Vampire Sub still would have made more money than this film. Especially total. Even if you take into account, you know, how $1989 to today's dollars, it still would have been more than this. That's fucking sad. Even if you take into account how the inflation, if you adjust it, shit like all those shitty date movie disaster movies, those would have made more money than this. That fucking sucks. <laughs> it does. But this film deserves a lot more attention, a lot more, um, a lot more talk. It's a solid film. It's one of my favorite Roger Howard films. It definitely be in my top three because I know the Hitcher is there, the original Hitcher. I know Split Seconds there. I know this film is there. If I did top five, I would put Blade Runner and Wanted, Dead or Alive in there in my top five. But this would be in my top three. I think number one would be Split Second. I just have a personal love for Split Second. I do. I have just a personal love. Ever since I was a kid, I love Split Second to death. Two would be The Hitcher, because that's just a badass movie, the original. And number three would be Blind Fury. But, uh, four and five, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll, anyway. That's Blind Fury. Yeah, not much, which is sad. Not even much to the, the disc. It's just... That. I mean, at least it's something, I should say. At least it's colorful. It's not just, boom, see yourself in the mirror type thing. But anyway, again, talent files and previews for other films. So it's nothing on the DVD, which is too bad. But uh, if you haven't seen the film, you like action films, or if you're a fan of Roger Hauer, you definitely need to see this one. So thanks for watching, and take care. Later.